Hi everyone and welcome to video number 24 on Henry VIII and his ministers. And this video, ladies and gentlemen, is all about the impact of the Reformation. Now we've seen over previous videos, religion, the Catholics and the Protestants, Reformation, it was very important in the reign of Henry VIII. In this particular video, what we're going to do is examine the actual impact of these religious changes, the so-called Reformation, on people in England and indeed the English Church. Between the main years of 13, 1534 to 1540. Now it might help you ladies and gentlemen if you think of it almost like a battle, a struggle, like an arm wrestle. Who is going to win? Are the Catholics going to emerge as the dominant religion or will it be the Protestants? Now, in one way, think of it like a seesaw. Seesaw, Marjorie Daw. Now, if you've got Catholics on one side and Protestants on the other, now if they're level, that's fine, the seesaw's even. But if Henry starts to favour one religion, let's say it's the Protestants, so the Protestants do well, the Catholics do badly, or it might go the other way. So what we're looking at is this battle, this movement, this seesaw between the Catholics and the Protestants. Now, who's in charge? Well, for the Catholics, the main people, number one, the Duke of Norfolk. He was one, probably the most powerful noble in the country and he was a Catholic. With him, a man called Stephen Gardner, the Bishop of Winchester, another important churchman, another important Catholic. So they're on one side of the seesaw. Their problem, if they go too far against Henry and his religious changes, if they support the Pope too much, they could be accused of treason for opposing Henry. And we saw last video what happened to people who opposed Henry. So they're the Catholics. On the other side, of course, you have Henry VIII, the Crown and the Protestants. Now, the two main people here are both called Thomas. Thomas Cromwell, the chief advisor, and Thomas Cranmer, the Archbishop of Canterbury. So they're on the Protestant side. They want to see more changes. They want to see more reform in the Reformation. But they've got to be careful. If they push Protestantism too much, they've got to remember Henry himself was still a Catholic. So there's a balance between the Catholics and the Protestants, the seesaw. Let's have a look at who was up and who was down in these key years, 1534 to 1540. Well, for the first few years, 1534 to 1538, it's the Protestants who are doing well. It's the Thomases, Cromwell and Cranmer. They are leading the moves to strengthen the Protestant church and make more reforms. Here's some of them for you. First one, July 1536, the Act of Ten Articles. Now, in the Catholic Church, there are seven sacraments, special parts of their religion. Cromwell, Cranmer, reduced this down to three. Baptism, the Eucharist, communion and penance. This is the first move towards more Protestant beliefs. It's on the seesaw, the Protestants taking the advantage. Same year, number two, August 1536, we get the first set of royal injunctions. All priests now have to say the same thing. Most of them support the act of supremacy, which is Henry in charge of the church. They are introducing, saying, no, 
we are not going to do pilgrimages. Now in the Catholic religion, people would go on a journey to a holy or a special site, maybe like Canterbury or somewhere like that. And in the first set of royal injunctions, the Protestants say, no, we don't want to do that. We are also going to reduce the number of holy days or special saints days in the year. They are beginning to stop certain Catholic things that the Protestants just looked on as superstitious. No, that's not right. That's not what our religion is all about. So in 1536, you can say the Protestants are in the ascendancy on the seesaw. They are going up. The Catholics are going down. Next year, 1537, the next reform, July 1537, the Bishop's Book says the main duty or the main job of a priest must be to preach preaching. Okay, but remember the idea of a seesaw. Remember 1536, the Protestants were right up here. 1537, there's a little bit of a move towards Catholics because it says four of the Catholic seven sacraments are now allowed. Remember, it had been reduced to three. Now they've been allowed a fourth. So it shows that the seesaw, the struggle, is not all one way, Catholic versus Protestants. And as an example of that, there was a man called John Frith, a Protestant, burned at the stake. Now, normally you would think if the Protestants are on the up, they wouldn't be burning Protestant people. But as I'm trying to show you, there was movement both ways. Point number four. September 1538, the second set of royal injunctions. This time, the Bible. There would be a Bible in English in every single church. They're moving away from the Catholic reliance on the old language of Latin, moving towards English. There was also a stronger attempt to stop these pilgrimages, stop these holy journeys. Now, an example of that, way back in English history, under uh, the reign of Henry II, I think it was, Thomas Becket, the Archbishop of Canterbury, was murdered by four knights who heard King Henry say, who will rid me of this troublesome priest? And they went and murdered Thomas Becket. Since then, there'd been a shrine, a special holy place set up and people would go on the journey on pilgrimage to pray at the shrine where Becket was murdered. Well, in 1538, the shrine was destroyed. The body was dug up. The ideas of praying to shrines, statues, relics, images, they were taken out of the churches because that was a Catholic idea. So this was a big win for the Protestants. Let's go back to our seesaw. 1538, the Protestants are doing very, very well. They are in the ascendancy. They're on the up. The impact of the Reformation has strengthened Protestantism and weakened Catholicism. So if you stopped at 1538, your seesaw might be like that. But... There's nearly always a but in history, ladies and gentlemen. But then we begin to see a swing back towards the Catholics. Now, what's happening here? Well, first of all, Henry VIII himself. Remember, although he's now head of the Church of England, think back. He only broke with the Pope, maybe not really for religious reasons, but for political reasons. The Pope would not allow him to divorce Catherine of Aragon and Marianne Boleyn, which is what he wanted. Henry himself had remained a Catholic, even though he'd allowed the new Protestant religion. He himself was a Catholic. Maybe as now Henry was beginning to get older himself, possibly he feared what would happen to him after he died? 
Maybe he's fearing hell fire. So we begin to see a drift back towards the Catholics. 1539, it's almost as if Henry thought, right, I've allowed some changes, I've allowed some reform, but they've gone far enough. I don't think I'll allow any more. So he introduces the Act of Six Articles, and this is the swing back towards the Catholics. Well, the Catholic belief that in the service of Mass, when you have the bread and the wine, they, the Catholics actually believe that that somehow is the body and blood of Christ. The posh word for it is transubstantiation. Well, in the Act of Six Articles, the belief in transubstantiation is back. The Protestants didn't believe that. The Catholics did, swinging back. Also, the idea of purgatory. When you die, Catholics believe there were three things that could happen to you. Number one, if you've been a real good person, straight to heaven. Number three, if you've been a real bad person, straight to hell. Or number two, for most people who are a bit good and bad, almost like a waiting room, waiting to get to heaven, called purgatory. And the Act of Six Articles allows this belief, this idea of purgatory to come back, the swing back to the Catholics. Also in the Act of Six Articles, priests cannot marry. Okay. Well, in the Protestant church, for example, Thomas Cranmer, he was married. He had a wife and children. So you can see it's definitely swinging back towards the Catholics. That shows how tricky it is for us to assess the nature of the impact. It's not one way. The Reformation in Henry's reign, 1534 to 1540, those key years, it moves back and forwards. Yes, the Protestant religion had moved forward, but the death of Thomas Cromwell and Henry's opposition to reform undermined that move forward. The impact, therefore, must be mixed. So that's the impact on the church. What about the impact on people's lives? Well, we can look at it through various, various different points. Let's have a look. Number one, those things I mentioned earlier, holy days, special days, when the people could have a day off, no work. 1530, the old Catholic idea, there were many, many holy days in the year. 1540, after the Protestants had moved in, these were reduced almost to zero. It's had a big impact on life in the villages the people working in the fields they'd have to work more so holy days is one of the ways by reducing it that changed people's lives second one 1530 the old catholic way church services were often linked to the work life of the people for example think of harvest they would celebrate the harvest in church for getting in all the crops to keep them safe for another year 1540, more Protestants, that tended to stop. The services were more based on the Bible, not on people's working life. Third one, church services, for example, Mass. 1530, Catholic, in Latin, as I've said, the old language, belief in transubstantiation. The bread and wine equaling the body and blood. 1540, there was some change. Yes, the services were now in English, not Latin. That's a change. But there was still this idea of transubstantiation, body and blood. Therefore, that hadn't really changed. Point number four, statues. 1530, the Catholic, many, many statues, particularly of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Catholics in their services would pray to the statues, pray to Mary, pray to the statues of saints in the church. 
They thought it would help them. 1540, Protestants, many of the statues had gone. Now, prayer was towards God, based on good work, not just praying to statues. Now, the last one, as I've mentioned before, the pilgrimages, the holy journey, praying to the relics, the special holy bones of these saints. Catholics, 1530, many people went on pilgrimage. They thought it was a quick route to heaven when you died. Oh, I've been good in life. I went on a pilgrimage. Please allow me into heaven. Catholic way, pilgrimages. 1540, no, the pilgrimages had stopped. There were no more of these holy special bones or relics. The quick route to heaven for the Protestants wasn't to go on pilgrimage. It was to help people, help the poor, lead a better life. That was the quick route to heaven. So there is some change there on the impact of the Reformation on people's lives. Five points of some change. But there was still continuity as well, remember, the transubstantiation. So how do we sum all that up, ladies and gentlemen? The impact of the Reformation. There was definitely change. Reform means change. Reformation describes a time of change. But it wasn't all one way. Sometimes the change was quite limited. After Henry VIII died, he was succeeded by his son, Edward, who was a very strong Protestant. And that led to more changes. The Protestants doing very, very well. After Edward died with no children, his stepsister, his half-sister, Mary, took over. Well, Mary was Catholic. And that led to a, a big change the other way. The Catholics were on the up and the Protestants were down. After the death of Mary with no children, her sister, her stepsister, her half-sister, Elizabeth, took over. Protestants. And it went a bit more back so as it was with Henry, the middle way, fluctuating. So, we've seen in this video, religious changes in general, how it affected the church, how it affected people. Our next video, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at religious change in one particular specific area, and that is the religious houses the religious homes, the religious communities, the monasteries. And that's coming next. As ever, I can put my seesaw away. As ever, I hope it's been useful. All the best now. See you soon. Bye now.